and here's the camera raw assignment. Um, but uh, first I'll show you this. This is ArtStation, in case you don't know. ArtStation, remember I was talking about this kind of last week. ArtStation is where um, people go to find art and you can find anything you want. And you can just browse and there's lots of concept art and 3D art and it's like Casita a little bit. Um, and it's from people all over the world, a lot of movie people and video game people. But if you're looking for something to drop in the background, you know, um, of your thing, or you're looking for, like, I really want to do kind of a pirate photograph, like the light and stuff that these people, you know, that so, some of the people do uh, is really kind of inspiring. Like if you were to take this and use this as a storyboard to take a photograph, right, you could rebuild this and uh, bring in all the reds and stuff. It's, it's really helpful. It's a, it's a really nice uh, place to go look for stuff. And there's just guns and mechs. There's a lot of guns and mechs, I have to say. <laughs> and spaceships. But there's also a lot of other really cool Ghibli sort of things are all over the place. And, and it's uh, international, right? So these people are from China and, and uh, the Philippines and all over the place. Um, and like, the, like this one is really nice. Maybe I'll save that just for fun. We'll, we'll get back to that and later. That one, and that one is for zero dollars, I see. And another one is for seven. So you like you just go through and it'll show you prices? Yeah, if you yeah, if you want to buy it, this is a 3D model. So the 3D model cost, uh, you can download this. There's a three, this is um right, so there it is what it looks like when it has all its textures and mesh and stuff on it. And then here's what it looks like when you start removing it. This is has what's called materials only on it. And this is uh, has um, what, what are called the normal maps, which are all, create all the little bumps and stuff on the thing. Because re really, it looks like this. It's just chicken wiry looking thing. Um, but then when you get it all together, it comes out. And they teach you how to make it, uh, which is cool. It's a really nice place where people go to share art and things. Um, and I don't know if you need scary troll people in your um, in your photography, but if you did, there it is. Like there was one of the students, I thought this, something like this would be really fun. In fact, here. His eyes are really like almost realistic. Yeah. Well, it, I will show you guys before the semester's up a little bit of, um, of Photoshop MetaHuman. Um, which is uh, basically a place where you go to create fake people and they're uber realistic. So you can use them for anything so, uh, and you can pose them however you want. Um, it's really quite neat, but that's another day. Shit. Victoria's Secrets is doing that now, right? They have an AI model. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that AI is even a little bit different. Like this, uh, oh, it's looking for a person. Shadow Demon Search Artwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Find a good one. All right, we'll bring this up later too. Just for fun. This is how I use Photoshop. <laughs> uh, so uh, well, quite a lot of the work that I've done um, is creating things called textures. So textures are 2D maps that are mapped onto 3D things that then look like stuff. Does that make sense? So in 3D world, um, you often need like to build realistic dirt or something. And the way you do it is by creating a picture of the dirt or taking an actual photograph of the dirt and coloring it. And, and then you tell the light how to react to that photograph of the dirt. Uh, so this is a, a, there's no actual geometry or bumps to this, right? This is a perfectly smooth sphere. Um, it's just, it's got this on it, right? 
this this tells the light how high to make things this gives the color this tells uh the object how to reflect off of the the 3d object and then this one has to do with the shadows it's pretty neat anyways so i spent a lot of time recreating really realistic uh little vignettes like this uh to then be put into the game to be, and then they're relit and stuff like that. Yeah. Art station, check it out. It's kind of fun to get ideas here and stuff. And I'm sure AI is starting to get in here. Um, like, right, if you need a gumball machine, there you go. Like there's a lot of things for uh, your, when you're doing photography and stuff that, um, you might need to drop in or that you want to drop in just for fun. All right. So I think it's just, oh, um, it's just Gemini, just it's the Sean and Gemini show again. <laughs> I'll try not to ask you too many obscure questions. We'll stay on track. <laughs> that, that's all right. Uh, so um, this is, uh, uh, is it Kyle? I think that might be Kylie. I wish Kylie was here to tell me, but uh, this this whole asynchronous remote thing is killing because I like talking to an audience. Um, and they, uh, I don't know if you guys all got my email, but they canceled the in-person class because um, there was not enough people. Uh, so but we did pick up some new online students, which is kind of All right, so this is great. Um, definitely um, two different variants of it, right? So the original, this is the original, and this is the uh, Venetian at Vegas. So it's kind of odd to that this is a photograph of a fake scenario, right? Which is is, is a little weird, but uh, but the light differences in them is very obvious to see. You like take it from a a cool. Uh, kind of evening in August to, um, you know, late afternoon in July. Do you, when you get in photography, do you guys talk about uh, images like that or with, to describe light? About the light and the hours. Yeah, yeah absolutely. About the, the yeah. blue hour, the golden hour, you know, when to shoot, when not. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was trained as a fine artist, right? So I, I have the painter side of that. Like I know how to paint in, color moods like this. So when I describe pictures like this, I, I often will talk about that stuff. But generally, the 3D crowd doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about. So that's nice to, <laughs> to be around people who uh, are hep to my ancient uh, uh, medieval speak. Um, Cool. I totally yeah, get no. it. And then like the time of year too, where the sun is higher or lower. Yeah. Well, and how, yeah. It, yeah. And how, how much diffusion there is on everything mm -hmm. and like how the yeah, shadows yeah. are. I think in one of my last classes, we talked about um, fire photography because that's been such a topic in California mm, Yeah. and how it's actually my favorite to shoot in Oh yeah. because there are no shadows, none. It's the most perfect diffused light. And while it's a little more orange, I can correct that in camera with the white balance. Wow. But it is absolutely ideal conditions for photography. Interesting. Which is pretty sad, but kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, just means that you have an outlet for your pyro uh, habits that I'm sure. I got. Want. Well, you know, like <laughs> in movies, when we when we record movies and we, we put that color cast on them, they're a little yellow to yeah. depict poverty. So the same yeah. kind of idea that during a fire it depicts poverty, but you can change that tone. You just still have the perfect ambient lighting. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. If you switch the orange to like a blue and stuff, it would it would be mm -hmm. quite a, a decent uh, yeah. light as long as long as there's a lot of it. Um, yeah, and right. no shadows. Well, yeah, because there's like the whole sky is all particles. Yeah. So it's you know hazardous, but no shadows is like the really big deal. So you can stand anywhere, and you're not going to have shade versus light it's all light that's and cool. all even yeah i am um, i just got tapped by the fire the 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 fire safe marine people to do a bunch of effects for them 
So I'll be taking their their filming footage right now, and I'll be uh, dropping in. Uh, I'll be lighting the hills of Marin on fire um, via VFX in After Effects and stuff. So well, that might fun. be something that you know that you might come across unexpectedly. So if yeah. you want to look up, you know, fire photography and ambient lighting in smoke, that's it's a whole different light that Crazy. I've never experienced. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll share some of it to you, uh, with you guys, and you can give me your expert opinion uh, when I when I get into it. All right, and so that was Kylie, Kyle, Kylie. And here's yours, Gemini. I thought this was really good too. It's like cold. It's like November or something. That was Very, also smoke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it smoke? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it kind of looks like grayed out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see the smoke now. Mm -hmm. And then there you can super see the smoke, right? You get the brown color in yeah. the sky. Nice. And what did you do to it? Mass, temperature, increase clarity. I love that all you guys like jumped, like every single one of you jumped into <laughs> uh, camera raw and knew exactly what buttons to hit. Like some of these, uh, like yours, yours Gemini is pretty obvious. Uh, and I, I, I like it, but you kind of jump time too, right? So you have here, you have, um, like modern day kind of uh, November sort of like at three or four o'clock when the sun starts to not rise as much, but that's because the smoke is kind of killing things. But the, you've you've whited the the original picture. The smoke's all whited out, so you can't really get a sense of it like you can. And then this one is kind of super saturated, like a photograph from the seventies or something. Uh, but you do get the brown in it a lot more. It's not a really nice job. It's a really good contrast between the two. You have Thank good, you. Have really nice. Did you? That was just garbage there. Or did you put that there? I left the on garbage purpose? there. Yeah. Um, I left it on purpose. I do a lot of landscapes in Lake County, and there's so much garbage and dumps on the side yeah. of the road and abandoned vehicles. And so I, I run a photography group in Lake County, and I, I really, um kind of point out that I will not remove the garbage. <laughs> we pay public works to do this, you know, to do this and volunteers can do this. And I yeah. find it gross. I'm from Napa. We don't, you know, yeah. pick up here. Yeah. Well, so I make sure to leave it in there for them. Yeah. Hold on a sec. Mm -hmm. Sorry. My wife set an alarm on Alexa and it was going off. Uh, you know what else it serves, right? Is a, It gives you a clue of the white balance uh, between the two photographs. So you can see that this one's kind of a darker uh, purple, right? And then this one's a much richer blue. Uh, so it, it's kind of interesting that way that it gives you that, uh, you know, a, a white balance clue on the, I call it that. One of the other things I did, if you look down at that last of my edits, and then the geometry aspect, and I offset it just slightly so that the flare in the second picture would show up more than the first picture. So in the upper left corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I get you. Yeah, so it's I mean, hard to... So it's not there in the first. So then I changed the aspect and it popped in like really clear. Huh. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I kind of felt like adding that flare in just kind of gives it like this, like I didn't falsify the picture. I'm not trying to make it prettier. I'm trying yeah. to make it more real, if that makes sense. Well, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff's washed out in this one. So to, to be yeah. able to see it here is really cool. And you didn't add that flare back in, right? That's a- I did not add it. Yeah. No, I just changed the aspect. And then the first thing I did was I went to mask and then I, picked, I selected the sky alone mm -hmm. and you know brought that up first because I didn't want the landscape to be too oversaturated or too this or too that. So I worked on them separate. Gotcha. Did you use layers? Because you have a friend who doesn't use layers. <laughs> Not in camera raw, because that's the only thing I did. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, because yeah, it with camera raw, it makes its own layers, things like every function's its own. Yeah, so I did the mask. I mean, it does layers. So I did, there's a couple yeah. layers. There's the, the, the foreground, and then the sky is separate. That's really nice. Thank you. I like your I like your subject matter. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been up here somewhere. Um, that's well, where I live. That mountain way in the back. That's Boggs up there? No, that's Cobb, and then to the right is Boggs. Okay, so we're here. And no, dead here center, the big mountain in the middle is Cobb. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one. And then if you go to the right, it's Boggs. And then okay. if you go to the right more, those are hills. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of protect Harbin, which is another small community. Gotcha. Where Where is uh, the actual lake from here? Is it yeah, um, just below that, the big mountain? It's so, um, right where your cursor is. It would just be like another 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we come down off the ridge from uh, Ikaya, Eureka, so whatever the Napa no, side is. Way Oh, the Napa side? Yeah. Well, kind of well, where I mean, your cursor uh, is right now, Yeah. right that, that hill, on mm -hmm. the other side of that is Cloverdale, I think. Oh, oh okay. Or yeah. Geyserville so that, and all that. Yeah. So, so Sonoma County runs parallel to what you're yeah, looking we, at now. We do that super, super windy road, and then it drops down into your, to the gas station mm -hmm. there and into your town. And then we cruise through your town and keep going up to the lake. Oh, I think that's to Lakeport. So that's further north, up 101. Okay. But this, but that right there to the left of this image is lower, like, um, um, yeah, Geyserville. Yeah. I mean, that's where we have all the cal, calpine geysers. Yeah. So, yeah, all your energy comes from up there, from <laughs> fracking. <laughs> you pump your sewer water in and steam comes out. Nice. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound good. Nope. Um, um, <laughs> Great job, though. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with everybody's skills are like through the roof with photography. So I, I'm no expert, but it's all, it's all pretty good. Finley. Finley is somewhere in the Redwoods. I always like to try and guess where these places are. That's a nice one, right? Because it's all dark and he's there. They were Finley can go either way. I'm not sure Finley's so, uh, uh, how Finley identifies. So I'm just going to say they um, is uh, it's really nice. They were able to bring out quite a bit of the redwoods. I wouldn't think you'd be able to to get that out of there. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that. These shadows held that much information, but held quite a bit, right? Like, look at that, all the able to bop the greens out and stuff. Let's see, exposure. Knock down the contrast, up the highlights, plus the temperature and added a bit of a tint. Uh, yeah, maybe added like a reddish orangey tint. Very cool. All right, Gloria, I couldn't figure out where this was, but it's a really neat lake. There's like houses around it. Stuff. Pine trees, maybe it's pine crest or something. Although I don't know that there's, it's like you can swim there, but there's no like trails or anything around it that I can see. Um, and that is a super saturated. <laughs> yeah, look, plus 94 on the saturation. <laughs> but you know, the, the deal wasn't to make it a better picture, it was just to alter it in some way. So this is kind of uh, fun like this. When you, when you hit the saturation this high, it sort of starts to become a graphic rather than a uh, photograph, right? You lose a lot of the detail. It becomes bold colors. Even with the detail in here, the colors are so highly saturated that uh, the detail drops out from your eye. So you don't even, even though it's there, you don't notice it because you're, 
Need sunglasses to look. Really neat though. It's a very nice photograph. All right. This is Maureen's. Yeah, did she say that she was, uh, let's see. Use the paintbrush to soften the skin texture out. Salt should mask made a new layer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. Uh, the, only, the only thing I would say is, um, the only thing I would say is that um, by adding that white mask, you do, you, um, you didn't uh, add back in uh, the color to her face. Uh, but that, once again, I didn't say fix the photo, right? I just said do stuff to it. So this is perfectly fine. But I, I think uh, I want this amount of wrinkles, but this uh, amount of color to her face. Uh, this is a really great, do you guys have access to LinkedIn Learning? Probably not. There's a really uh, wonderful um, woman who's been fixing photo photographs for her entire life uh, and um, with Photoshop and and a little bit with Camera Raw. Well, actually, she says she does most of her work in Camera Raw and then a little bit of Photoshop. Uh, but she's so good at this. And she's so sloppy. She's like, oh, like Julia Child cooking or something. She's like, oh, just kind of go around here with the, Thing. It doesn't have to really match up and then change the color. And you look at her photos afterwards, you're like, dang, that's exactly, that's perfect. And you were not careful at all. You didn't even think about, you know, a perfect mat or anything. It's so crazy. If, if I think about it, I'll dig her up here when, I'll, when we take a break and I'll, I'll show you. Um, I, I pay for, do you guys know what LinkedIn is? Most of you guys? Um, LinkedIn is a, um, place where it's like uh, Facebook, but for business, where you, if you have a, a job or you um, have something that you do, like you're a photographer, you would go on LinkedIn and create a professional profile on LinkedIn. And then people who are looking for photographers go to LinkedIn and look for people to hire. Like that's, it's a really good place to um, put your work. Uh, and um, they also have a different part of that whole website that is just a really, really quite good um, video learning series. Uh, and you can almost in anything you'd ever want to take. Um, so it's kind of neat. Uh, and I, I watched a while ago, I watched the one on how to do, um, how to paint up faces. Nice. All right, and Grace. Nice. It's um, I think like this one's looking a lot better to me. Like the the uh, this one is a little washed out, but you putting color back into it ended up looking pretty cool. I think you could, I think if you backed it off a little bit, you wouldn't be able to tell you added color to it. Um, but uh, it's good. A weird fallen tree thing. There's a lot of strange lines going on there for, for a tree fall. Oh, this is the one I wanted to look at. I like this one a lot. It's a really kind of statement photograph, isn't it? <laughs> It's a lot of fun. I like this one. And and kind of darker is okay. But I, I much prefer this one. Um, it's kind of fun. I think it'd be really cool in black and white too. Yeah, I I I uh, I bumped it off to my desktop, so we'll play around with it later on. Uh, I think it does have a lot of possibilities like standalone in the real world if you're doing a photograph a photograph this is great 
but the, the possibilities of having this giant white unused uh, space up here with these people walking off into the distance is great. Like I almost want to see like a UFO or something fun in there. Yeah. Cool. This one here, um, Cassandra, who I think is here. No, she was here, huh? She, she was here and she's like, oh, it's him again. Uh, and then she took off. Uh, I had to look at it like nine times to see what the difference was uh, of it. Because it's such a subtle change. It's like sharpened, yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's much more designed. Yeah. So this this one, right? I, I mean the the wraps and stuff and all this contrast is is all pretty good. But this is, you know, it's a little bit dark in here for these. Uh, and uh, yeah. with this one, she brought really brought out the red of the sauce and stuff and sharpened the contrast on everything. Increase texture, increase the clarity, uh, increase the dehaze. Yeah, I guess that would sharpen it. Up. Increase the shadow. I would have thought she reduced the shadow. Interesting. That's really nice. So you you really have to look at it hard to see the change. Or I do. I'm not a photographer. So. I had to the give it a good clarity and the D haze works on the midtones. Yeah. So that's why she didn't have to change a lot of colors in that for it to be really clean. Yeah. I think it's really nice. Much better. I don't know. Too. I think we should taste them. Yeah, I know, right? Somebody said <laughs> that here. <laughs> Gloria said she made her hungry. <laughs> yeah, see, we should do a taste test to see if before or after is better. <laughs> too funny um but everybody that's a uh, great uh, work on your homework um uh, if you haven't turned anything in please do uh turn it still i think i left this open so you can keep turning stuff into here for a while uh, but i'd love to see uh everybody's uh work um for the first by the way speaking of homework and stuff uh, for the first assignment uh, I just marked everybody full credit on that one because uh, it was kind of messed up. It was a bit of a rush job. Yeah, but for the second one here, you guys did great. I'm really happy that um, you guys did some stuff. Quite interesting and good. Your, your skills are through the roof. You're going to really put me through the paces here, aren't you? All right. Except you gave us a photography assignment, not Photoshop. I know. I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why there was a photography project in there, but there you go. It's I don't really get to choose. Um, uh, so uh, I guess uh, technically I'm subbing for this class. So they gave me the class that was supposed to be taught. I said, oh, go ahead and modify it as much as you want. But I didn't know enough about the class, uh, the first or the second class, to be able to alter what you guys were doing. So I had to kind of go with the flow. So class three will not be that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, finally, I finally got my feet under me with it. So let's, uh, do you guys need a break? Well, Gemini, do you need a break? <laughs> Yeah, let's take five and then, I mean, you can just pause the recording, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll pause the recording and mm -hmm. um, we'll come back in five and uh, continue. It is 6.34 right now. Yep. So we'll just say, oh, yeah. Go, go ahead and take 10. Minutes. Go ahead and take oh, 10. Okay. okay. And I'll, I'll see you at 6.50. Uh, um, or okay. or 6.45. <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
I am here if you want to pick up. I saw that. Yeah, I'm just learning how to turn everything oh, back on. Oh. Are you muted? About... No. Shoot, hold on a second. I can't hear you. Hold on. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How about now? Can you hear me now? We saw you take it off mute. I'm not really sure what's going on. Hello, I can hear you. No, Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Hello, hello. No? Totally can't hear you. I'm on my Mac too and it's not working. Hello, hello. Can you hear me now? Hello? No, I'm not lighting up. Yeah, I am. Wait, I can see it. I am talking. It shows on your screen, no sound. Huh. Well, I can see the little microphone when I talk. It goes green. Um, it's not, I think it's just your computer's not connecting to audio because I can see the icon on the bottom right of your screen that shows no, no sound. It's not something I can control. Can you hear me now? Yep. I heard that. Hello, hello. Yes. Weird. Okay, so pausing <laughs> the recording caused my computer to switch into a weird default mode where I had to restart my headphones. So I don't have to restart the recording, but I do have to redo my headphones. Hmm. Always something. All right. We're still record we're recording again. I'm gonna share my screen. There we go. It's not recording yet. Oh, it is. It just didn't give me the warning yet this time. But yeah, cool. I've got a I the other recording just finished um, doing its thing. So I got to put it in a box before. I close. Okay. That to that to that to that to that. Get rid of this. Let's go back here. Back to our modules, go to module.
that's it for module two. Goodbye, module two. That was fun. All right, so let's look at um, the module thing, Imajigger here. Um, you can read through this if you want. It's uh, we're doing an introduction to masking today and layers, and so we'll be talking a lot about clipping masks and layer masks and how I feel about them, because uh, this class is always about my how I feel about stuff. Um, the objectives is to describe the difference between a layer mask and a channel mask. Review the function of the layers panel button. Did you you took Photoshop one right? Did they and they went into the layers a little bit? Uh, yeah, just the basics. Okay. Differentiate between layers and mask. Differentiate between color channels and alpha channels, and make a quick mask edit. To do to do. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna have a tutorial first look at masks. We're going to do a stained glass exercise. We're going to do a head swap exercise. Um, and um, we already evaluated the raw images. And apparently there's a quiz that I didn't create. <laughs> that I need to either take that part off that says quiz or um, put a new one on. OK, so if we look here in the module, um, I've created this hickey thing. I actually borrowed some of it and created some of it. Um, and it kind of goes in and tells you what every little bit of uh, this is Photoshop 2024. Um, so it has uh, up here, it's called the filter panel. This These things here are, are new to 2024. And they uh, the only difference, uh, everything else is was here before. And I can I'll go through it as as we're discussing it. I'll go through it. But the only thing I want to call out is that in 2024, you can have a filter program now so that um, if you're using one of these categories up here and you want to only see those, say you only wanted to see text, you can hit the T button here and only the text will show, um, which is kind of cool, actually. It, it's a little bit like Bridge, right, where you can filter things out. Um, over here in this panel, um, you can't probably see it on my screen very well, but these are all the different types of, um, of um, layers that you can make in Photoshop and what they're called. Um, basically, we're going to use this uh, standard layer here, just the regular one most of the time. Uh, we'll get into text and we'll do shapes too. Uh, and then the background layer is only the background layer because it's on the bottom and it's locked. Um, so I included this picture here, um, which is a picture of the Walt Disney Studios back in the day, like doing uh, Pinocchio or something. Um, but you can see that um, this system here is um, as a layer system. So all these these things here, uh, maybe I can. Zoom. I don't know why I just didn't make it a lot bigger. Um, so these things here are all um, layer glass layers. On and on each of these glass layers is a bit of the background from Pinocchio. So um, and they kind of recede into the background. So this system uh, of shooting a camera through these multiple layers to get more dimension, right? Uh, go. Um, was was invented for use in animation by Disney. Uh, actually, not by Walt Disney, but by Ubi Works, the guy that worked for Disney. Um, and um, this is how they were able to like get parallax by moving these layers uh, separately. So like as you went, it, you, as you pulled into the things, they would slowly like separate like that. And it would seem like parallax happening, even though they were uh, just static images. But they would go and they'd animate each layer like a little bit as the camera pushed in. Uh, and th this goes back to like uh, the theater and stuff, right? With uh, scrims and things like this whole idea of having multiple layers to um, to get a feel of um, depth. Um, and so in cinematography, right, the back one would be, have aerial diffusion and it would be blue. And then as it went forward, right, it would be more colorful because you'd start off with full hue and then end up uh, kind of going into the distance. So 
why is this why I'm even talking about the Disney's down shooter <laughs> camera? It's because it was the base it's what they built Photoshop to mimic, right? That this here is this here. They basically said, Oh, that was a great idea. Disney used to do that. Um we should incorporate that here. So it's like stacks. What did I say here? Photoshop, uh, layers of transparent sheet stacks on top of each other. Each layer contained various elements such as text, graphics, and blah, 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 blah. So the Knoll brothers, uh, not not the ones in Oasis, but the, the Knoll brothers um, who invented Photoshop worked uh, at ILM and Pixar and very much would have known about the Disney stuff. So when they went to create a system, they borrowed a little bit. All right, so now you know your history. Here's a layer panel buttons and functions. I will go through this in actual Photoshop, but they're here by definition uh, if you want to read through them or you need like quick reference to what any of this stuff does. Uh, you can come back to this page. It's all kind of there for you in, in the module. All right, 3.2 layer. I have to fix the numbers. Layer and clipping mask. So a layer mask uh, is a mask that's uh, that are attached in individual layers. And so let's look at that. I'll call Photoshop. Look, we're in Photoshop. I'm so excited. Oh, oh. One important, super important thing I forgot. Uh, since you guys don't have the book and you guys uh, that the, all this stuff was made from, uh, if I don't uh, if I don't create a picture for you instead of the one that was originally done with it, um, I will include it here at the bottom of the um, module for you guys to download. So for instance, this one is called Glass Circle. You can go into the module right now, just click on it. Uh, click uh, on it again, and it will uh, download, and then you can just bring it onto your desktop. And um, I also, um, you'll see there's, uh, we're going to do some head swapping and stuff in a little bit. Um, so there's the picture. This is, there's a video of from a previous class I did uh, on head swapping, and I thought that'd be fun to include because it's a totally different mindset of how to do it. Um, and then there's the head swapping that come with the class and the glass circle thing. Talk about. Great. Okie dokie. So if we come here uh, to uh, our glass thing here, uh, second. So, um, you can see if we look over here to the layers, these are the layers here. Um, by the way, uh, my um, <clears throat> my workspace, <clears throat> if you go up here to arrange workspace, I use, um, I just, I mostly use the painting workspace, although I've modified my own because I, I have a palette that I use for things over here, uh, like a personal palette. Remember we were talking about libraries? So th these are all libraries here of different things. Uh, last week was libraries. And I kind of showed, I kind of glossed over it, but this is one of the things you can do with libraries is create a library of um, custom colors. So these custom colors, I have a cartoon strip and these custom colors are part of that, uh, are, are, my, are my palette for the cartoon strip. I, for the characters. I only use these colors to create the characters. Well, uh, these colors and a couple of these two. And this one. I don't know why I don't have those down here. But all right. So here we have our background. And I'm going to unclick the little safety thing. And that's going to unlock the layer if I, if that, if that layer has a little safe on it, it's locked and I can't really do much to it. Uh, but if I take the little safe off, uh, it is. So let's let's talk about hmm, why in the world you would make a mask in the first place. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting concept um, uh, that um, 
I, I have to say I don't use it heavily. There, there's a whole thing in Photoshop now with creating um, creating uh, or, or, or working in a non-destructive manner so that you never uh, really ruin the original. You always have the original in pristine condition. Um, and when you work that way, like if I were to change this into a smart object, uh, it, it ticks a whole bunch of stuff in Photoshop that you then have to adhere to. Uh, it's like you start working down this other skew that's uh, kind of weird. Like you can't work directly on the image. You have to work on a uh, a, lay, a modify a modifier layer because you can't work on a you can't actually do stuff to a, a smart object because it's not really there. It's a representation of this object stored somewhere else. Blah blah blah. So. Everybody, I, the, I I don't know why. Um, I kind of feel like it's uh, the same thing as organic food to me. Um, <laughs> like I know it's probably better, uh, but I don't really know why or what. And it's much harder to get. And it's a little more expensive. So that's how I feel about smart objects and working in a non-destructive manner. Um, like you can do it, but like I can just as easily. Um, duplicate this, right? Just click on it and duplicate that layer. And now I have another layer, exactly the same thing that I can uh, lock and never touch. And I can turn off and now like, or even just save this in a file somewhere uh, and never ever touch it. And then I have my original. It's not like once you touch a photograph, all instances of that, you know, of that image are, in, are horribly ruined. Uh, it's that's not the deal at all. So uh, I'm not sure why, but um, it you know it, it's there's it's all in here. <laughs> you can convert this to a smart object. Uh, you can see there's this. It's converted to a smart object. It has that little box down there, which means it's a smart object. Which means that I can no longer. Um, do stuff directly to this image. I now have to create another layer above it and then do stuff to that layer. Uh, or I need to um, create a modifier uh, layer. Yes, I need to come over here and um, create a modification layer of some sort um, of whatever I want to do. Say I want to change the color of that smart object. I'd Call up hue and saturation here, and you can't see it because it bopped over here. But then it would give me the hue and saturation editor, and I'd be able to go in and and muck around with the picture. Uh, but I'm not actually. And if I double click on this, I'll get the original picture. See it? It opened it up in a new file. So that's the original file uh, that this file is now referencing. This. This. this Sorry, uh, this is a reference back. When you make it a smart object, it's a reference back to the original object, which if you double click on this, uh, it's actually stored somewhere else. It's all sorts of crazy. Um, and I don't know why you'd ever do it because it's it's way less trouble just to make a duplicate copy of it. Or uh, when on your original, in your, uh, in your uh, folder, just, Call it something else, and then work on version one of it. Um, it's this causes so many tr so much trouble uh, compared to just working um, on the um, on the on a actual version of it. Uh, so if you want to take something from um, a smart object to a raster object, and that's what you want to work on, it's called raster. Um, you can um, come in here and um, there's like convert to raster somewhere in here. Rasterize. There it is, rasterize layer. And see that took the little box out of there. And now it's uh, it's once again a uh, editable, um, an editable um, thing layer. Okay. I have a question real quick. Yes. Um, you know, when we were talking about how there's like the seven ways to do seven things. Uh-huh. Um, another way to go back in that would could we go to history? 
layer oh, history. You might be able to. You know what? I've never once in my life ever used history for anything. Um, so yeah, because if you like make a whole bunch of edits, you can go back in that edit history and just click yeah. on the one you want to like, like backwards in time and start from there. And then uh, also and th we would be saving like we always have that downloaded original on our desktop or mm -hmm. wherever stored first. So it's not always like, is it not always important to, to save a copy while we're working here? No, no, not at all. Like if you have the original, it depends like what you need the original for, right? Uh, anything that we do to this one, right? It doesn't matter. It, do it never affects this one. This one's just sitting there hiding down below everything. Yeah, but say uh, like you you do four edits and you're like, oh, I only want I want to go back two edits. Uh -huh. You can go to history, right? Yeah, then you, you could go you you could go to history and um and Turn then and then go back, but you also get like twenty five undos. So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so um, oh, here let me show you a different way. So another kind of cheapo way. Uh, let me make this a smart object. You. Why do I lose it all the time? Revert to a smart object. So another, uh, if you don't want to go in and find raster there, you can always just create another layer. Uh, and then if you merge a smart object together, with a raster object, it, it takes the smart out of it and brings it into the present. Think of a smart object as a reference, right, to somewhere else. Like it's when I have it as a smart object, it's going to a different file and getting a reference of that picture and putting it here to use. Um, I mean, I'm positive uh, that there are reasons to work in a non destructive manner that I am not privy to that are like good for print or something weird like that, where they need to run, they have one picture, but they need to run various color things over it. Uh, I'm sure there are, are people who have um, a reason for doing it, but it, it's not anything that, that really comes into play for us so much. Um, so, all right, and, and I'm way opinionated on it. So there you go. Uh, which is really stupid. I mean, I'm always eager to learn new things, but sometimes I'm like, eh, do you really, do you really need to do that? Because it seems like more work. Um, yeah, because I would much rather work on the actual um, piece than a reference to the piece in a thing where I'm, I, I don't get full functionality of my thing. I, I only get to use uh, so many of these uh, modification things. Um, I guess I could um, bring up a um, a uh, another layer, a modification. Hmm. Anyways, all right. So let's get to the masking part. So um, once we have our image on a layer, right, um, then uh, we can do what's called a quick mask, which is this one here. Well, this little layer mask. Um, and if we hit that, then uh, you can see it creates it creates a link to the mask. So now we're going to be looking um, at, um, I'm going to mask off some of this and you'll see um, you'll see it here. And when you work in a mask, you um, it works on a, a series of uh, gradations, right? Um, are you familiar with the swatchy thing, the color picker and stuff I have open? Is that new to you guys? Am I? Freaking you out that way. Well, very basics ask. again. Sorry? Just the very basics. OK, so this is a, a color picker, right? Um, and you have swatches, right, where you can pick the colors like you're picking crayons or something. And then the uh, color channel here. And this can be any of these colors. I can just slide it around here. And once I get somewhere, I can choose. Uh, so this chooses hue, right? And then I can choose uh, saturation from zero to full saturation. Uh, but I also have light and dark at the same time. So um, full down here, right, is no saturation, full black. And full up here is um, full, satur full saturation white. 
Um, and, uh, and here's medium gray, right? So a mask, uh, I'll do black first. Uh, a mask, but when I go full black, anything I paint black, it will, um, it'll remove from the screen. I'm just gonna grab a pen here, right? And then I can just start uh, drawing with black. Uh, and uh, you can kind of see it drawing black there. Uh, and as I draw black at a rate, it looks like it's erasing the background, but it's not that background is still there. If I were to take that mask off, you would see that um, it's all, all this stuff is still here. Um, that's a good way to show you. So this is just fake. It's just hiding. It's masking, right? Let's, uh, but if I were to come over here with the uh, magic wand tool, right? See how when I pick a magic wand tool, how it, it grabs uh, bits of the flowers and stuff. So that stuff still exists over here. See, when I use the magic wand, you can see, can you see it grabbing stuff in here a little bit? Um, which means that um, the, the mask is a, isn't uh, real, right? Or, or it's, it's, it is real, but it isn't real. So I can turn this on here and you can see kind of what it's grabbing. So for instance, if I select this, you can see it's grabbed this green bit there, but um, it didn't really, there, or, or, or it did really, but you just can't see what it's grabbing. Like if I use the magic wand tool here, you can see it grabs little bits here. Uh, and uh, so that's the bad part about using a mask is that this, it's really hard to use a selection tool with a mask because you're just hiding what's behind it rather than actually removing it. So um, for the, the way that this assignment was originally designed is kind of bad um, because it teaches you a really long, horrible way to do what he needs to do, what, what they wanted to do. So, uh, God, I'm so negative about that. It's not really a lot. It's just a different way than I'm used to. Uh, by the way, if you right click on this stuff, you can disable them or delete them and stuff uh, right off of that bit. All right, I'm going to select nothing just for fun. Uh, so uh, here's the assignment. The assignment is uh, we're going to uh, cut this uh, out and we're going to um, change the, uh, the color a little bit. And the assignment is um, uh, by to do it by using masks. And we just saw how to do it with a layer mask, right? So if we have a layer and we press, oops, little button. We press the little a button that looks kind of like a camera. Um, and then we grab a, a pen tool and we can come in here and uh, we can draw around the object. And, uh, and mask out the background. And we can just do all this. Sorry. So my second guy comes in. Okay. So now uh, I've essentially kind of removed the background uh, from this thing. And I can uh, go back over here and I can um, bring in. Uh, our misty picture here. I'm going to stretch it way out just so it fits. Um, so when you drag and drop an image into onto an existing stack, which is what I did with this. So I just have that image sitting on my desktop, right? And I just clicked on it and dragged it and dropped it on top of the stack, which means that I put it on top of the layers that existed there already. So when you do that, it automatically creates a, um, a new layer, uh, but it creates it as a smart object, right? Um, which means that it can't be edited. If I were to um, delete this, if I were to um, uh, go like this, file open, and then um, navigate, to that picture, 
uh, it opens it as a regular picture, right? I can go uh, select all and go um, edit, copy. And then I can come over here and go edit, paste. And you can see uh, when I do it that way, it's now, um, it doesn't come in as a smart object. This is a rastered object because what we're doing, we're not, uh, we're, um, Photoshop's already thought about what the object is. When you bring it in as a smart object, Photoshop hasn't had a chance to think about what the heck it's doing. But when you bring it in as a copy pasted object, it um, it's a little different. It comes in raster. It doesn't really matter. Either way, you, you know now how to get back and forth from a smart object. So uh, it's not a big deal. All right, so here's the big deal though. If I take this layer now, right, that I just brought in and I drop it below that, layer with the mask on it, you can see that behind uh, our uh, stained glass window uh, is now that uh, the, the new picture that we have. Um, and that's why you would use a mask, because now we've not destructed this. This is a non-destructive way to edit this picture. <laughs> and uh, and it, it works perfectly fine. Uh, um, I could I could have gone in and been really meticulous, uh, you know, uh, zoomed in, do do do, and then um, busted out my tool and made it really small, and kind of tried uh, I tried to go in and and kind of paint over. Am I actually painting black? And you can see how that goes. And I would uh, I would just zoom in like this, maybe even closer, depending. And my goal is to get rid of any of this uh, green bit. Why do I get the feeling that it's Painting black. No, it's doing the but it's supposed to. Weird. Okay. Um, so um, that's one way of doing. It. Uh, that's how you use a layer mask. If you wanted to use a layer mask uh, to uh, isolate this object, um, you just bring the object in, hit the little button, draw what you don't want to be able to be seen, and you're good to go. Now, uh, remember, I said that uh, this. If I use uh, varying degrees, like I can bring stuff back by using paint a drawing with white. So if I come in here and I make my brush bigger, I can um, bring back the trees uh, by painting with white. Sorry, I didn't have the thing selected. I can, and now I have black selected. <laughs> there it is. I can bring back the background um, by painting with white. And you can see, like this is this would be kind of good. Like, oh, I didn't really do such a good job editing uh, the the side. Now I want to go back and make it really a lot tighter. Um, and then you can go back and um, kind of work it a lot better. Just make brush smaller. You guys know about the brackets making your brushes smaller or bigger. That's a really that's like the only. Uh, key I use. So next to the enter button are the two brackets and one size makes it smaller and one makes it larger. I sound like a Jefferson Starships. I'm following along with you, but as I use the paintbrush to uh -huh. paint black on there, yeah. nothing is showing up. Like not the the checkerboard, nothing. Um, when you, uh, when you, uh, did you, do you have this select? Do you see here? Do you have that selected or do you have that selected when you're painting layer, with the brush? The second one. So it's showing up on the white square there, uh -huh. the, what I'm drawing, just like yours did. Uh -huh. It is showing in there where I drew, but on yeah. the actual image of the stained glass, it's not showing up. Like how you're moving the mouse across that right now and making changes that you can visually see. Uh -huh. I cannot see that. It's not showing up. Um, do you have this one like this up above where it's where it's oh, I did blocking? not have that one deselected or hidden. Oh, huh. there we go. 
Yep, that was it. I just needed to hide the bottom. Gotcha. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, because it'll show through, right? Like yep. in, in it's it's just like a window, right? Uh, uh, it's like a, a picture you're putting on a window. So if you cut around, if you take the back, the bad stuff, if you take away stuff, right, it'll just see whatever's below it. You need to turn that off. I, that's kind of why I put this picture in between them is so that you can tell it's something different. So I can see the original picture back here and then the new picture here and then what we want to keep here like that. So isn't that fun? Masking and and you can do this with heads and faces, right? And you don't have to use a hard brush when you're doing this, right? You can um, come up here and alter your. You guys know about changing your brushes. Gemini, you're the only guys in the in the class. <laughs> yes. Yes. Answer for everybody. We right, do. So, you know, if you click in here, right? There's all these brush choices uh, that you can access. Um, and the the size I always change um, via the brackets, but the hardness and stuff I always change manually in here. And I, I and depending on and you can see like a, a here right, a hard brush is has a a very chiseled hard edge, and a soft brush um, has a very um, kind of feathered edge. So if you want, if you're working in hair or fur or something like that, the feathered edge is really good. So um, for instance, um, if if I wanted to blend this this in this 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 part here in with this a little bit, I would uh, select a medium gray rather than a black or a white uh, with a feathered uh, brush, and then uh, oops, on the wrong thing. That's what I want. And then you can see how it kind of, and I can turn down the opacity too. And you can see how now I have to go over it a couple times to kind of get it to fade, uh, fade in a little bit. But sometimes you want that, right? Where you want to be able to have to kind of work it a little bit, especially like I said, with hair or fur and stuff like that. This, this kind of stuff works really well. So, uh, or if you want to, if you have something that you're putting into something else and you want to fade it off into the distance, um, that's a good technique for that. And I have a Cintiq, and so I can kind of draw on it like a crayon. Uh, so if you're wondering how I can make angles like that so quickly, um, that's why. Cool. So that's one, that's layer mask, right? The layer mask. Now uh, that works, a layer mask right works on the actual layer that we are on. So we're gonna do a clipping mask now, uh, which is uh, slightly different. Um, that's where you, um, you actually take an object and put it into a, um, a shape of some sort. And the shape is generally um, created by you in some way or shape. So um, let's, I'm just going to delete all, I'm going to delete this. Let's do it. <clears throat> and I'm going to duplicate this, right? Because I want to keep my original one. You don't have to work this way, but it's okay. So bring that up there. <clears throat> okay, so what we have here is our um, thing again. <clears throat> and, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, circular shapes. Uh, circular shapes are notoriously hard to uh, cut out, especially some a picture like this, where there's not a sharp edge to it, right? Um, we have lots of tools to kind of make this happen. Uh, we have um, the um, quick selection tool here. So if, if you, uh, I have the magic. Uh, wand selected, but if you if you click on it, you can see in the corner here, there's little tiny arrows. If I click on that, I can do the quick selection tool, uh, and then I can choose um, any of these three things. I usually do this one, the middle one, um, 
and then it gives you a brush size. And what this allows me to do is now I can take uh, and make this a little bigger so you can see what happens. So I can paint selection, right? So now I'm painting selection. And as I paint it, it kind of tries to magnet to the, um, magnet's the best way to explain it. it, tries to magnet to the contrast, but it does a really lousy job. Um, <laughs> I never use the tool, uh, but if you uh, make it smaller and you go at it a little slower, uh, and you kind of are more careful with it, uh, then you can kind of make it happen. You can also go in here, um, back in here to the, uh, for some reason, Come on, where'd it go? Oh, it's showing up weird. It's showing up underneath my um, window. So you go back to the magic wand and then you can change the tolerance. Most magic wand tolerance is always set to 32, but you see it doesn't grab very well. And so this is basically the same thing that little painty brush thing I was using. It's, it goes around and uh, it finds pieces of contrast but the second you get in here where the contrast is too close to the dark it jumps it jumps the shark there and so you can set this to like three or something um but then you'll be forever <laughs> doing it so like okay well, maybe 15 uh and you go in here and try and and i'm holding down shift to add um things to this uh, honestly, you'd be better selecting the dark spot and then selecting inverse. Um, so um, those are some of the selection tools. Uh, and um, you're welcome to go play with them. The, um, the, uh, the quick selection tool is generally very good for stuff. Um, it just it doesn't work for this particular thing because there's too much, uh, there's not enough contrast. Uh, in order for it to grab there's too many color choices and stuff so how do you grab this thing well there's a, a sort of okay way like i could create um, a sphere if i hold down shift and pull out it'll grab the sphere um, and um, hold it so uh, if you use sorry if you use this tool this the sphere selection the uh, circle selector and you um, don't hold shift, it's kind of creates an oval. It's hard to create a perfect circle. But if you hold down shift while you select it, it creates a perfect circle. Uh, it's very hard to kind of dial this. Oh, look, I did a great job though. I am so cool. Uh, it's very hard to get a perfect circle like this uh, that totally uh, encapsulates the thing. And, and remember, circles are hard to grab, like squares, piece of cake. Triangles, no problem, um, but uh, spheres, really hard to get a good edge on them. I should talk about that a little bit too. So this is a, a little too big. Um, I can, with this selected, I can come up here to selection and go uh, modify and um, go contract. And then it'll ask me how much I want to contract. And I say, well, how about two pixels? And it'll go blink, it'll bring it in two pixels. And then I need to um, come back in here and uh, kind of, oh, no, I made a cut. Don't do that. Don't select that button. Yeah, this one. Uh, and I kind of can play this game for a little while. And uh, once I have it, I go control X and you can see it cut it out and I can go control. Uh, if I want it to be the exact same place, I can go uh, shift. Uh, I can go, I'll just do this one. Control paste, paste in place. Do do. And it puts it right back where it is, but then I can ditch this. And then we have a very nice looking circle um, uh, overlaid on our object, which is kind of cool. But um, that's still not the easy way to do it. That is another way to do it. Not the easy way to do it. 
All right, you ready? Buckle up. Duplicator of picture again. Yeah. Right, bring that up here. There we go with that. Um, by the way, when you paste something into something else, that is a clipping mask. I should have shown you that. Damn it. I stopped. I'll catch on the next round. We're going to do it again. OK, so uh, if we come down here to this tool here, um, this is the shapes tool. And I know you don't know about the shapes tool because it's a vector thing. And you weren't allowed to learn vector in Photoshop one or so. so the vector tool creates a mathematically uh, progressive shape. And it works just like this tool did. I hold down Shift, click somewhere here, and it makes a circle. There's our circle. And uh, it ha its operations are up here. Uh, you can have a stroke. It doesn't have a stroke at the moment, or I'll turn it off. And you can change the color to uh, whatever you want. It, it just it makes um, um, it makes a, I'm going to make it lighter. It makes a um, a perfect shape. So this shape, right? No matter is called is a vector shape and a vector shape uh, is as perfect as it can possibly be within the resolution whereas a raster shape is not this background here is a raster shape remember we made it a raster and so this kind of weaves all over the place uh, but this is mathematically as perfect as possible it's not really a picture it's a, a series it's a it's a bit of code that looks like a circle. So if we, uh, and the good part about that is uh, that no matter how big or small it is, uh, it'll always maintain the same resolution. It'll always have the same uh, perfect resolution, no matter what size the picture is, no matter what size, um, how big or small we make it. Whereas if I were to do that with a raster picture, like this one, um, it would uh, fall apart pretty quickly if I made it bigger. It'd be okay if you go smaller, it's okay for a little while, but bigger is a bad deal. Anyways, back to the shape. So this is a uh, vector circle. And you can see here, it's created, or an ellipse, there you go. It's created this shape uh, uh, thing here. And um, shape, shape uh, layers are a lot like, smart objects where you can't really operate on them very well. Uh, if you want to operate on it, you have to change it into a vector shape. Um, but we don't need to do that because we're just going to borrow it. We might do that. So I'll show you just for fun. So what I want to do here is um, increase this shape so that it blocks out uh, all the other bit of the thing behind it. Uh, and I can come over here to opacity if I want and then uh, really kind of move around the edges and see where, like this, this thing is not perfectly round, which is a problem for me. Uh, but we can get very close. And so you start looking. You don't want to change the shape of the circle, but we want to make sure that our mat is uh, encompassing as much of it as possible. So I'm kind of like, one pixel there, one pixel there, it's a little bit above there. Um, but that's pretty good. So um, the problem the problem with it is you can't um, select a, a vector object. So we need to rasterize it in order to be able to select it, but that's OK. So we can come over here and go raster layer. Uh, then we can select the object. I can go like this. I can hit the new button, hit select subject, and it selects it perfectly. I can then hide this layer, come back down to our layer here, uh, and then go control X, and then control V, uh, hide that one. And then we have a, a, a perfect circle um, of, the, of an image uh, here. Um, but you can see there's like a little bit of green and stuff hanging out here. And I could go in and I could paint that, um, but we're going to do something else. So I go back a little bit. Uh, we have our perfect circle here. Um, 
I'm going to go control C, control X, oh, or option, no, it's control, could be nice too. And then I'm going to turn this back on, right, the circle. And then um, I'm going to um, select it with the magic wand. And then I'm going to go up here because I have I have the stained glass window from this one in my buffer right now. It's I hit Control C, and it's it's I didn't paste it yet, but it's sitting in my buffer somewhere. Um, so I can hide that. And what I want to do is have that um, picture that's sitting in my buffer paste into this uh, shape, and I, I can even hide that. I want I want that to paste into this circle I have selected. Uh, so I want to go um, edit, paste special. Um, oh, I, I need a layer for it to live on in it. Um, OK. Edit, paste special, paste into. And then you can see that it's now pasted, pasted that picture into a shape on the desktop. I could have just as easily come over here with like a square marquee thing, right? And created a little square here, created a new layer for it to live on, and gone uh, edit, uh, paste special, paste into. And you can see there it pasted that into it. And now I can go into that little window, right? Because it lives inside there. Uh, it's really just masking it off and, and move that object around in that little window. I can hit Control T to transform it, and I can make it really small and bring that up there and do that. So this is um, a form of um, clipping masks. When you take an object and you paste it into an object, that's a clipping mask. So what is it good for? So let me get rid of these two here. Um, it's really good for things like this, right? Uh, I have a this object here lives in a perfect circle, but uh, just barely. So what I want to do is select this object here. And I want to increase the size just a little bit so that um, the pixels uh, that I, I cover those bases on it that were bad, but still maintain a perfect circle. And I can even stretch it nonlinear in a, in a nonlinear way, right? Uh, so that it starts hiding. I just want to get rid of the green a little bit. I can even hold down control and pull on one of the corners and nonlinears or, or, or uh, um, phase, phase, uh, when it's when you, uh, I think it's called phase transforming. You grab one little bit and move it. You see how it kind of deforms it a little bit. But if you do it very sparingly, and then I hit enter, and you can see it. Um, I now have the um, filter. I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. I can delete those. And I'm not sure what this layer is. I think I created an object. Um, so <laughs> so there, there we have that whole thing. Now, I can't, what I can't do is um, take the whole shape and reduce it and have it still be that circle. In order to do that, I need to come uh, down below it, right? And then uh, merge these two shapes together. And now uh, I have my window thingy majigger as a perfect circle. And I can change uh, change the shape of it and move it around. It, it's, it's now just a picture on a picture. It's just that we've made the edges uh, perfectly round. Uh, and, and given the outline thing, so way better than masking this way, because you have a little bit more control. Um, and you get a perfect shape. You're, it's not hand done. Uh, and we still have our original one. It's just fine.
Hey, any questions? Any questions from our entire class, Gemini? Har har. <laughs> I think I'm getting it. Okay. Yeah, there's just a lot, a lot of like you know complicated ways to to you know end up with the same visual result. But that's really cool that we have the options and. Yeah, I just did. I just did the same thing like three or four different ways. So. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even so just a lot of information to process, but awesome yeah. that we can do it in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this this is one of my preferred ways to do it. Um, cool. All right. Um, oh, what did I want to do here? Hide that. I really wanted to bring this guy over. Just for fun. So also um, within layers are um, bl uh, blending options, right? So right now, uh, I don't know if that's confusing. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so now I have this scary guy here, right? And this picture here. Uh, and uh, right now they don't go uh, together so well. So I can reduce the opacity of it, right? And he kind of is in there. Um, sort of how I was thinking he would be um, like a big giant guy in the distance or something. Um, but uh, that's not very good because it just kind of looks like garbage. So there are other ways to um, do a um, layer thing. Uh, uh, let me rasterize this. I could allow, I can leave it because this this function that we're going to do now doesn't have anything to do with being raster or vector, but I just prefer it. So here where it says normal, right? If we click on that, we get all these different choices, uh, and these choices are uh, tell this layer how it's going to react with the layer right below it. It really just tells this layer how it's going to display, right? Um, and for instance, if I go to the first one uh, or the second one, which is multiply, it's taking um, the uh, both the images and putting them together, and it, it makes for a darker image. You can kind of see here, right? Uh, th this is the original image, and here's this one, but where it was dark, it's um, um, it's even darker now. Um, the opposite of this one is screen, which makes it lighter. Um, so, and then let's see, there's dissolve. Uh, we'll just go through and dissolve, dissolves like that, like in a kind of a garrison blurry sort of dissolve way. Um, darken obviously makes it darker. Um, multiply, I use multiply a lot. Multiply is really good for shadows, for adding shadows to things. Um, color burn, linear burn, dark. We did that one already. Lighten, screen, color dodge. So uh, a lot of times overlay, overlay is a pretty good one. Soft light, hard light. Hard lights might be the one we use because we, we get to, uh, the background kind of fades away pretty well. Vivid, in light. Ooh, that's good. So these all, you know, display this layer in a different way on on top of the uh, on top of the um, other one. So all those things are doing is telling this layer how to behave above this layer. So we're looking through this layer to this layer. Uh, so what do I want to do here? Make it smaller. Can you mm -hmm. um can you use the generative um expand on that image first? Oh yeah, like can I while sort of... it's on top mean, like that? You mean can I just uh select the, the, the character like that? 
<laughs> no, I mean, it, can you use that image itself and like the mountains behind him? So instead of selecting and putting him in on layers, uh -huh. can you do a generative fill oh. and like expand like the mountains or clouds behind him and Crazy. then overlay him with opacity? Yeah, I have to make a better, I have to make a slightly better uh, cut for that to happen. It'll, ha it'll have trouble with this here. Uh, and um, what I probably want to do is come in here with an eraser tool and keep this here. I probably want to go in and, and knock out and get these posts together. Uh, so in order for um, generative fill to work right, they have to be on the same layer. And I don't necessarily want to um, lose the independence of these layers. So what I'm going to do is select both of them and duplicate those layers like that. And then I'll hide the two below and I'll merge these ones together, right? And then I can take generative fill. and select that one. And maybe I add mountains. I still think I should have cleaned it a lot. Yeah, we'll see if this works. <laughs> hey, it's beautiful, except that it took out everything. <laughs> yeah, except oh, no. it's gone. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, it doesn't always work so well. I really like that. <laughs> That's from the original one to this is hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm going to give that a no. That didn't work really well. Awesome. Uh, uh, but us guys have an answer now. So that's yes. Uh, I imagine you know what you know what might work is not doing the whole thing. So for instance, like. If I did like this much of it, let's see, let's just hit generative fill. Sometimes you have to do it in little pieces. It's kind of a hack way to go around about it though. Yeah, there you go, right? It's a little better. Um, to actually do this, even if I wanted um, to add the mountains, uh, like you were suggesting, um, the best way to go about doing this would be to cut the character out, uh, remove all the mountains, put all the mountains back in as one thing, and then put the character back in. So just really fast, I'm going to use the selection tool. X, control V, put that away for a little bit. Get rid of that one. Oh, put that back up. <clears throat> and then I could go like this. Eh, not too bad. I kind of like that one, except for the tent or whatever that is. All right, we'll keep that one. See that when you do generative fill, it creates a um, clipping mask. So let's merge those together so it's an actual object. And then we can go in there, image, adjust, view saturation, so we can mess with the color. 
we can uh, darken it and kick up the saturation and move it into the same palette. Uh, something like that. Now we want this one. Get rid of this one. Yeah, I see this is what I this is a lot of work this way too. It it all kind of starts to boil down to um how much how long is it going to take you um i think a, a better thing to make this happen right would i could come in here and type in uh dark blue map That's horrible. I got rid of all my fences. <laughs> uh, we'll keep it, and I'll take this and I'll put that above that, and then uh, we can go in and see which one kind of works with the mountains. Oh, the bird thing shut. see how I, I can look for the one that kind of works best. I mean, I'm not thrilled with all, any of those pictures. I just grabbed one. Well, we can go this way. Which one is that light? I heard that lighten would work. Uh, okay, so we, now we, we put in the mountains. They're not the cool mountains that he had. And then with him, we can... Pick one that kind of puts him into the distance a little bit. And then we want to, we want him to be lighter, but not not transparent. Image adjust hue saturation again. You knock out the saturation a little. And then we'd have to go in and tidy this up so you can't see his hands. And this is not a bad place. Remember, I was talking about your uh, brushes to go in and have a softer brush with perhaps a little less opacity so that we can match these people. It's beginning to look like a masterpiece. There you go. <laughs> that's how you put crap together um, yeah so you can see how it's kind of a back and forth um, it, in order to get the mountains in there perfectly like they were the purple one there I would have to um, recreate the mountains uh, recreate these mountains uh, as like paint them or something or get them dark somewhere else bring them in and then marry them into this scene a little bit. Would um, it be another option if we took that original, the other image of that monster mm -hmm. and we did an expand, a generative expand first and then brought it onto this as a new layer? Oh yeah, actually that would probably work quite well. Look then at we you with it. your generative expand knowledge. Well, I'm, I'm just learning and it's kind of exciting. So... <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so here, uh, you know about the crop tool? 
the crop tool uh, crops things, makes things smaller, also mm -hmm. makes things bigger. Not many people know. Right. And this is this is really fun because all you have to do is select the area, right? So I brought a magic thing. I don't even have to hit anything. Yeah, you just hit generate and it just expands, right? Yeah. Like it selects as is. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah right. You know what you're up to. I kind of like that. It's way smart. Yeah, so that's what. So why is it giving me garbage? Oh, I don't mind that. Weird. Except for the red lines. That is really weird that it would do that. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's picking up these weird Maybe you things. went too far. Like if we did a little bigger, like, I, I don't know. I know it's not perfect. Yeah. I was doing a tutorial and added uh, donkey pinata and it was so bad <laughs> like <laughs> it's so far from what i typed in and yeah but i loved it but yeah it, sometimes it just gets really really far so we, we can just um oh, stamp tool stamp uh really cranky aren't you That's not, yeah, it's not good. I wonder if I could select the red bits and hit generative fill again. <laughs> Make it it's nice also this time. new. It's like this is how we find out, you know? Yeah. Mm. Funny, we'll do a little bit of generative fill every single assignment, apparently. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't in the 2023, was it? Uh, it was a download, and it was huge. Yeah, that didn't. It was not very happy mm. about that. It didn't generate a fill anything. All right. So, um, yes, I'm going to say that that is the way to go. Uh, you know what? I could probably just do this. I'll put this on a new layer, but I can operate on it better without that linkage and weird generative fill. Was it because your is your background red? Is that why? Yeah. See here, my that's exactly why my uh, background color was red. My secondary color wasn't set to white. It would have been white had it not been red. Hmm. Um, but we can take this and uh, just kind of scooch it over and take this. I'm just selecting and then hitting Control T and scooch that over. And then take this. Scooch it down. And then take the healing brush, make it really big. Oh, I've accepted my stuff. You have to be really sloppy with the healing brush. Nope, <laughs> not anything like I was hoping it would be. It didn't create the mountains. I, I think it has trouble with painterly stuff. Crazy. All right, well, it was fun okay. playing around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do think you're right. I think the way to go would be to take this picture as it was originally and um, expand it, little, maybe not as much as I did. Yeah. maybe just like a little tiny bit or maybe one side and then the other or something. I'm not sure what the prompt should be. Let's see. I'll do it one more time. God dang it. Look what you have me doing. I have stuff teaching, to teach you. Teaching us. This is awesome. Super important stuff to teach you, not this. We have to learn how to swap heads on things. 
It's very important. <laughs> it, it's actually like one of the things I do most often just for fun. Swap heads on things. All right. Take that. And I am select it. Here we'll we'll um we'll telegraph our finished product by selecting uh, I'll go in here and then I'll select the midtone from the background as my background color. <laughs> kind of a cheat. because uh, then it won't have the red lines right. They'll they'll semi match. Right. Generative fill go. Look at that. That's awesome. very nice. And now I can duplicate that layer. Do, 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 do. Put it down there for a second. Expand that. Oh. When you uncrop something, if it, anything's hanging out, it chops it. So I can't leave it laying around like I wanted to. I have to duplicate. Duplicate. OK, there's duplicate later. <clears throat> we can drag it over here. And I could uh, flip it around or something. I can warp it. Warp it. And now. So sharp. Fuzzy. Content aware. Proximity match. Sample all layers. We only have one layer. Wow, it's really doing a bad job. <laughs> Pain in my booty. Layers. One more time. Hey, there we go. When you're doing painterly things, you kind of have to painterly brush it. Um, stamp that thing from over there. Fine, be that way. God, you're pain in the butt. Welcome to Photoshop. This is what I do all the time. <laughs> is it like diff is it a lot different than photography? A lot. But I mean we we do different things, you know. Yeah. I imagine well, I mean, these techniques I'm using here could help you fix people's faces and stuff. <clears throat> yeah but like there. what you're doing now like taking this image expanded and yeah. putting it on the other photograph then you're making what what a photographer would think of um you know i don't know how to explain that yeah. um if i were to photoshop an image i don't want to clean up blemishes i know that's what we're asked to do more often but i would use it to fart around <laughs> like like yeah. putting this guy on that original image of the puddle but keeping the puddle and so yeah like that's something i would create um but like you just use this for graphics so 
it's it's entirely different but i don't even know what i'm explaining yeah. <laughs> it's okay um but in lightroom i use this a lot the healing brush things like yeah. that we use it same. cool all right well i'm glad we were able to get something together that's at least from the original one to this one, not too bad. All right, I still like that one. Whoever's photo, the, the person whose photo that says is gonna be like, what did he do to my picture? Um, my apologies. Um, okay, so saving, right? Um, just in case you didn't know, uh, when you save a Photoshop file with multiple layers like this one, uh, it saves as a PSD. Photoshop. Uh, I didn't even know what that stands for. Photoshop something. Document. Um, yeah, Photoshop document. Thank you. Um, I think I have PTSD. I have... <laughs> um, and that, when you save it, it saves all the layers, uh, even if they're not shown. <clears throat> Save it. <clears throat> now, the, the, if you want to save this as um, a non-layered object or picture, like say you wanted to put this on Facebook or something, uh, you would hit Save As. And instead of a Photoshop file, uh, sorry, Save As, save a copy. This is so annoying that they make you do that. Uh, then I can pick any of the other formats. And I usually go PNG with it because uh, I use that a lot for stuff. I think what Laird told us to do was um, export uh, for legacy. Oh, weird. Okay. I've never exported anything from Photoshop ever. It's, uh, yeah, that's it's easier for, like, because that's what we do in photography is export from Lightroom I, generally, or we can save or share a copy, but exporting really pops up all the options to change it to JPEG and everything all at once. Oh, uh, cool. Okay, well here, yeah, here it says he wants you to save it as uh, um, a JPEG. So mm -hmm. um, what what did I do with the assignment though? The, um, <laughs> what would I like you guys to do? I'd like, well, I'd like you to, uh, um, let me say this one. there. Uh, I'd like you to, um, not this one, uh, the, not that one. I'd like you to take your uh, glass one, right, uh, and hide that, and um, hide that. Where's my window? Uh, cut out. Um, um, I'd like you to take the glass. I'd like you like you take the, the window one here and uh, create a um, two uh, two versions of this. Uh, one version where you're using a um, a uh, mask to hide the background, and one version where you've cut it out, uh, and then have both versions over a second photo. And make sure that when you, uh, and then you can just, if you could screen capture it, please, instead of saving the actual file, screen capture it with what your layers look like. Um, that would be great, because then I can see uh, that you've um, done it and that it's interesting. I use snippets and just capture something like that is all I'm after, something where I can see what you've done here and I can see uh, the layer system going on here. And all I'm asking for is the first part of this assignment before we went, got all crazy, um, where you mask this out on with using a layer mask and then you uh, cut this out and you paste it into a shape using uh, paste into it. So. Um, both the, 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 the different kinds of masks are represented. 
represented here. And that's what goes here in do, 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 uh, AB. Got two different pictures, one one way, one the other, and that goes in here. Uh, guide extra stained glass, name your finished file, uh, that, but the, um, make it to name your finished file. One. One, two. Made your file reply. Yeah. Um. Layer mask and one has a what's the other mask called again? Uh, to clipping mask. Yay, look at me go. I'm so on top of it. All right, there you go. Now the assignment matches what we're doing. <laughs> oh, fun. All righty, let's get to the, the next assignment or the next thing we're going to cover here because we've got a little bit of time. Do most teachers talk for like three hours straight? Um, We do take breaks. You want to take a break? Yeah, can we take a little break? Absolutely. Okay. Anytime you want to, you can. We can pause it, and it's all good. Okay, I'm gonna pause it, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll take a break. I'll give you another ten minutes. Awesome. Eight twenty-one. Eight twenty-one, and I'll see okay. you then. John Nelson, Photoshop two, class number three, take four, go. Okay. Uh, once again, <laughs> uh, this is kind of a step-by-step -step of how to do things. Uh, it's a, a fair enough way to do it. It's um, he uses a layer mask uh to do the to swap the heads, uh, and I'll show you that. Um, um, oh, and uh, if I go to modules here, you'll see that uh. There's the head swap one and head swap two um, files are there for you to download. Okay, so uh, I, you know what's really funny here is <clears throat> this this is such a a ripe spot for generative double writing. <laughs> uh, I can't help myself. <laughs> so perfect yeah it's really funny everybody's just going to come out of here it's like generative feel geniuses they're like you're not supposed to learn that yet who's t yeah don't tell anybody that i taught you any of this crap uh, layers okay 
oh, look, here's the teddy bear picture that we should have had. Oh, yes. And then here is the kid picture. And I believe we're taking the teddy bear and putting it on the kid because doing it the other way uh, would be a little bit rough because he would have a big fat head. Uh, well, we can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm a, this picture has been obviously doctored in Photoshop and, and not super well, but they ran like a blur on the background and stuff. Uh, which, Jennifer, um, oddly enough, if you wanted to have that happen, uh, it's really easy to do. You can uh, run a blur through um, generative fill just by hitting, selecting this and hit blur. Or apparently you can take this into um, camera raw and run the blur, the, the rack focus functionality on it. Uh, all right, so uh, in order to uh, put this bear, according to the playbook um, in the thing, we select this object here, uh, copy it, move over to this one here, and paste it in, and then we resize it so that the bear's head is close to the size of the child's head. Something like that. And you can um, reduce the opacity of this and move it up so that uh, it's kind of on par with the kid. I would use um, uh, a slight moment here, slight moment here on um, finding hard edges to use when you're doing your masking and stuff. Like this bandana here would look fine on this kid and it, it's a great opportunity uh, for a clean cut rather than having to get in and do all this fur. So um, I'm going to select that up and I'm going to uh, create a, a uh, mask layer. Get my paintbrush. And I have it all set low. I'm going to crank it back up and I'm going to get rid of the fuzzy so it's a hard, hard brush. And be very careful. As I go around to only remove bits that I want. And remember, I'm not really removing these. I'm hiding them. I'm masking them. That's what it's called, mask. Uh, and you can see what I was talking about before, where the fur is really rough and so a fuzzy bit would be there, would be good there. Um, the bandana, I'm going to uh, carve that into a point. I could have painted it out, but this works just as well. All right, so now the kid has a bare head. The problem with doing it this way is now I go to scale it and stuff, and I've, I've got a much bigger image that I'm working with when I'm scaling this around. Um, and so it's a little harder to make that work. If I zoom in here, though, you can see um, the um, I can go in here now and select the, the mask, and then with a really small brush and a medium gray, right, I can come back in here and I'm going to kind of whisk some of the fur back into it, doing really wispy things. Painting it gray is what I'm doing. It's not working. You can also do that. That will work just fine. <laughs> that, why weren't you doing it before? Still painting it gray. Of course, that's just the back. Oh, yeah, that's just the back. Oh, we've reached the limit of the bear. Interesting. Um, so, we have an issue here where the... Um, the background is gray. 
it's not really working. I have a time I put white. Can I kind of just bring it back a little? That I just would bring it back a little, but I'm gonna have to go back the other way because the fur is not really super fantastic. I'm just gonna make kind of a feathered edge to this. Then I'll go back with black and go back the other way. Back and forth, I go. <laughs> Trying to get a fuzzy edge to it. Now, um, sometimes the, uh, the background image gets in your way and then you have to go to the background image and um, sort of like paint over behind what you're doing, but it, it could be a slippery slope because especially with a blurred background, it's a little rough. Um, you can also create yet another layer and then select one of the medium fur colors, have a really tiny brush, and then just go back and manually paint in uh, some little bits of fur. This is really good to do with hair and stuff. Like you don't have to do a lot, uh, but if you show like little wispy bits uh, breaking, Get a dark one over here because we're shadow. Um, it, it, it helps your eye think of um, it helps your eye think of the uh, feathered edge. Cool. And we can also put another layer down here uh, below if I wanted to drop shadow there. Um, Select a, a like a dark blue color or something. Um, just there. And I can just really strong arm this color in here like this. <clears throat> and remember I was saying that multiply is very good for shadows. Um, blue might have been a little blue. So we can go image, adjust, hue saturation, and get rid of the lights a little bit. And some of the saturation. And then we come back and feather edge of it. Let's see the multiply then covers all the different, it's the same shadow across all the different colors. Uh, it's kind of really nice uh, way to work. Okay, we have teddy bear, non-destructive teddy bear over kid's face. There you go. Interesting, huh? <laughs> now, if uh, we wanted to do this different way, my way, I would come in here uh, with a uh, selection tool, uh, say the last tool, and I would get as close as possible to the actual teddy bear head. I go control C, or copy, edit, copy, come over here, hit control B, paste the head down on this one, uh, reduce it until it's more to the size, less the size you want. Uh, 
and then pretty much do the same thing. Go in with brushes and kind of remove the sections that really kind of shouldn't be there, but I'm using a fuzzy brush because it's hair, right? Um, and I'm going to go in and, and remove all the stuff, and then I want to show you guys something. So um, when you're doing something like this, where it's integrating into the background, uh, it's um, good to have a fuzzy brush to, uh, to, like sometimes I'll even just go over the edge of the fuzzy brush because that bit in there, going into there, when you're looking at it from far away, integrates with your eye, uh, integrates the two images a lot. And so you can see how this is a little bit less work than uh, masking it off and then going back and forth and trying to get the thing. I just have to run this kind of light fuzzy brush eraser thing image digger uh, over the edges of this. And it's doing a twofold thing. It's merging the fur. It's allowing transparent bits along the very edge to show the background through. So immediately integrating the picture integrating the head into the picture. And it's, uh, I don't have to go back and do that fur thing because uh, it reads as um, just kind of being the same as, as the other one was, just it's a little bit faster to do it that way. Your choice. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Gemini? Um. I was thinking do it your way, but I was also looking at the first assignment uh -huh. and how we cut a hole. And I think I'd want to put like like do it in that fashion of um keeping the hat on uh -huh. and putting the bear in the boy's face, like only the face and head oh. to keep that on. Is that what was that the assignment? No, but I just oh. thought I would give it a try and see if I can. Yeah, actually, that's kind of cool. You know what you might want to do is, because um, uh, you can go in here, right? And I can select the hat. And then I can paste it on a layer above the bear. And then we can go in. I'm going to bring my brush up to full strength. because I've been boring this all night. Cut the kid out of the hat, and I'm going to actually. Yeah, kind of like that. But then I have the hat, right? So I'm going to hit Control T, and then I can pull it out um, to better fit. To better fit the bear. You know, it's like Paddington writing the copper, whatever is going on. No, right. I wonder if drop. Uh, do you got? Did I te I taught you about blending options before, right? So if you have a layer, another thing you can do are effects. There's like a whole group of effects that you can perform on any mm -hmm. of the layers. You just right click and go uh, blending options. Where is it? There it is. Uh, and then this pops up, and you have the option of doing all the stuff glows and stuff. So if I do a drop shadow, and then bring the distance of that drop shadow back. Uh, that's too much garbage in the scene. If I, if I like. Oh, but it still has the whole square or rectangle that you selected. Uh, well, because, um, yeah, because I didn't really erase it very well. Yeah, so we'd have to go and erase really well to, before we started blending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'd, you'd want to do like like I didn't notice it was in there because it kind of looks like the background a little bit. Yeah, it went really well at first, yeah. Yeah. But like I was saying, you could also create a new layer, find a color here, and then go in and hand paint a, a shadow across it. Um, actually, we want to do it underneath the hat layer. So that's the hat layer. This is the layer below it. And then, um, come on. 
wakey wakey. Then I can reduce this quite a bit and then just paint like that. Then if you do too much, you can always pull back on the transparency. Fun. Yeah. Uh, I have this guy. I didn't do anything with him. Uh, I'm going to select this subject. I'm going to use um, generative fill to select just his face there. Let's see. We'll bring him in here. He's huge, comparatively speaking. The little kid is a tiny image. There we go. A masterpiece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too much fun. So um, also then um, just um, for fun, uh, like I said, I had done this assignment before for a different class uh, in a different way. Uh, and I included my video for that. I did it with Harry Potter characters where I took Harry Potter and put his head on Hermione and Ron. Uh, in I think I did it in three different ways in here too, um, which is kind of fun. Uh, and I talk about color and things like that. Um, when you're doing, uh, we, we, we didn't really talk about um, the nuts and bolts of making so taking one picture and putting it into another picture and making it actually work with that picture um but you know color skin color and lighting and all those sort of things totally factor into making a believable um head swap sort of thing or or even you know just altering stuff like that's why generative fill is so good because it takes the light and the palette around it and redoes what you uh, redoes the missing parts with those colors. When you're you have to find a different picture to put in to match um, what's there before, it's a lot harder to kind of bring it around um, to make it work. But also with the class being a majority of photographers, yeah. we also have um, like an essentials. Um, if we switch essentials, let me see. Uh, or we just go to a, the adjustment panel. Then most of us know how to um, or should have a little experience um, adjusting the hue, saturation, things like that on an image that we bring in right. to make the whole thing work a little bit better. Yeah, so it'll be, you'll preload it. Um, mm -hmm. But don't worry, uh, we'll get around to, I'll teach you hue and saturation and I'll, I'll, I'll teach mm -hmm. you all the Photoshop uh, counterparts <laughs> to mm -hmm. the camera mm -hmm. raw. Um, we'll get there. They're, they're coming up. And we have a whole thing on vector, uh, which is going to make you guys crazy because vector is not easy to work. but uh, it'll be fun. And then we, ha we haven't even done any of the um, adjustment tools, like the, tra the transform, uh, like warp, any of that, like where you can take a picture, and kind of mush it, and bring it out. And... But we'll do that too. I like working in projects. So I think um, I'm going to try and see what they have going on instead of little one-offs, like this is how you use the layers uh, maybe have a bigger project that'll allow you guys to be creative like take this photo and make it with this photo instead i'll say hey uh, i want you guys to make a little kid riding a, a monster or something like that and then you guys get to pick all the imagery rather than me supplying that stuff to you i think it's better that way plus you guys got a ton a metric ton of photography laying around i'm sure so it'd be cool to see all that as well uh, I'll try and work that into the next assignment a little bit. These are fun. Terabytes weigh a lot less now, but yeah, we probably have a ton. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a, a, a terabyte at least, yeah. 
Yeah, if we're shooting raw, it goes really fast now. Yeah. That's cool. I think Lightroom warned me about, you know, my, my terabyte was full at around 42,000 photos. Wow. Something like that. That's Where a lot of photos. It is. It you is. throw some of that out. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> we use AI to select them. No. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, I know we're still recording. Um, uh -huh. but Come. I'm not gonna be present next week. I'm gonna be oh, on a plane. I, I remember. You're good. Okay, but I mean, for the other, for the rest of anybody watching too, like it'd be cool if somebody wants to join. <laughs> so that there's a dialogue. So I'm not talking there's to guys, myself. Yeah, like actual, you know, you yeah. guys, like the rest of you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get like an AI character to, to host with me that I can talk to. Yeah, you can make a fake Gemini for the week yeah. if you need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be with you in spirit. Yeah. Well you you'll be having a blast. So don't be thinking yeah. of the stupid class while you're out there having in you know yeah, shooting. Go. It's gonna be all snowing in Sedona and I'm I cannot wait. Yeah, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a really exciting trip. I'll bring um, some, I'll, I'll share some photos with you guys to to Photoshop if you want. Cool. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to I'd, lo well, I'd love to see everybody's work. It's really neat seeing the assignments. Um all right, I'm gonna call it then. This is this is as far I mean I could do this about four or five other different ways, but I think we're good. Um <laughs> so this one you want us to turn in a JPEG finished image? Uh, oh yeah, this this one. Sorry, yeah. Turn in a finished image that looks something like the bear and the kid here. The assignment's just to put the bear's uh, head on the kid's spot. But feel free to do whatever you uh, have fun with it. I, I'm gonna loo I'm gonna loosen up the reins a little bit on what content you're using, and force you guys to make some fun decisions. But uh, I need a little time to rewrite stuff. So. We are so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, as represent, Gemini yeah. says, as representative of my class, um, <laughs> we are very excited, especially that guy yeah. over there. <laughs> we are thrilled. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, have a nice vacation. I'm going to call it. I'll be here uh, if anybody wants to chime in. But Gemini, you don't have to hang out. Right, you, you can if you want. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Yep. Have a great night. I am going to stop the recording.